Have you ever wondered why men grow bald? It's weird that men grow bald because hair offers a lot of advantage to people. Having hair is really good. Uh, it's good to have hair because it controls the hair temperature, offers camouflage, can be used to make ropes, items of clothing, and provides a higher sensitivity to movements of air and insects. So, apparently, there's no reason for people to use hair. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, we, thought we thought that for baldness to exist in modern society, society there must, there have, must have been a reason. And so, and so, we, we hypothesized that a uh, main part of prehistoric human combat involved hair pulling. And so, it was adaptive for males to lose hair in order to reduce their vulnerability in fights. Uh, but when would these fights have occurred? Well, history takes us to the Neolithic period where the average life expectancy was lowest. And we believe that this was because of the fights that happened. Uh, this is because of the Neolithic Revolution, you might know it as Agricultural Revolution, uh, that led to an increase in population density and then the uh, ancient techniques of agriculture couldn't feed everyone and so uh, fights occurred. And so why is hair important? Well, amount of hair is directly proportional to the likelihood of being grabbed by the hair in the fight. And so we believe that humans who had less hair would be pulled less, would live longer lives, and would produce more offspring. Another thing we thought about is where the hair is lost. <laughs> and we c you can see that uh, the the this red circle represents uh, the point where the neck meets the skull, which is a point of, of rotation of the head. And so you can see that different points of the skull are at very different proportional uh, length uh, distance from uh, the, this point. And so uh, if they were pulled by the hair, uh, the, the, most the most vulnerable, vulnerable part, part, which would require, require less force to break the neck, would be first on top, then on, then the, on side, the side, and finally, and finally which doesn't really happen, on, on the beard. The beard. Uh, and uh, and instead, instead of, a, of a, a uniform, uniform uh, hair loss regime, uh, we predicted that uh, humans would start losing hair on the top, then on the sides, uh, and to become less vulnerable. And so you might be convinced by now of this theory, but we made a mathematical model to make predictions of what would have happened in the Neolithic period. And so we have three assumptions. The first is that stamina decreases with age, the second is that vulnerability increases with hair, and the third is that power uh, depends on stamina and vulnerability. And the question is what we want to know, what happens to power when hair is lost? And so you can see the graph for stamina decrease with age, S stands for stamina, A stands for age, and K is the constant that determines the loss of stamina uh, with age. Uh, this is the graph for vulnerability increase with hair. Uh, v stands for vulnerability, H is hair, and P is the importance of hair in fights and hair pulling and how frequent it was. Uh, here, is the different, here are the different rates of hair loss. H represents hair, A is age, and M is a constant that determines the rate of hair loss. And here you can see that there are many values of hair loss from M equals zero to M equals one, and these determined the rate at which uh, humans lose hair. And we believe that it was varied in the community. There, was, there were uh, humans with, who lost more hair, humans lost less hair, and so this is where the selective pressure uh, occurred. And so what happens to power when hair is lost? Uh, you can see that if you combine stamina and vulnerability, we get power. And you can see that individuals with higher M, which mean that they lose hair faster, uh, would have uh, higher power throughout their lives uh, in comparison with those who have smaller values of M and so would have more hair and less power over their lives. And so we can see that there is a real advantage to having less hair. Uh, another thing 
that we thought about is why don't people or men lose hair immediately? Because, because uh, in the previous rap we saw that the best value was M equals 1, which indicated, indicated that, that men will be bald at age, at age 20. This doesn't, this doesn't happen. happen. Why? Because, why? because health, health is also, is also increased, increased by hair. By hair. Uh, hair, uh, hair will offer uh, uh, an advantage. So, so you can see that the graph for health with hair. M represents health, H is hair. C is the importance of hair in health. And B is the baseline value or the health, health of, of the bald individual. individual. <laughs> <laughs> so, what so what happens to power time cell? If we combine power and, power and health, we see that the curves are different. much different. <laughs> that that uh, the M equals one isn't the best, but rather an uh, uh, intermediate hair loss regime. And so this is why men don't lose hair immediately, but rather lose it uh, slower uh, on their lifetime. lifetime. And so we can see that this theory has vast explanatory powers. It, it explains why mainly men suffer hair from loss, hair loss, why hair loss, loss is immediate, not immediate, uh, why, uh, why one of the first consequences of bad nutrition is, is hair decay. Uh, this is uh, because we believe this was an evolutionary adaptation, adaptation because, because uh, when, the uh, when the body sensed it wasn't, it wasn't getting enough nutrition, nutrition, it noticed it was going to get in a fight, and so lost hair to be less vulnerable. Uh, and the last is why the hair on the top of the head falls out first, because it's the most vulnerable place. Okay. And so, as no good theory is ever complete, we want to do some future work on this and, and learn more about what values of M are predominant in modern human society. And so, and so uh, uh, well, I would like to invite all male, part 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 male uh, viewers, uh, viewers uh, uh, live streaming uh, here to participate in our survey uh, of uh, hair. hair. And so and so uh, here, uh, here we have the normal scale of hair loss, which determines various types of hair. And uh, on the blog of Wilkham's Beard, you can go there, tell your age, tell what type of hair you have, and we can uh, better determine uh, how the hair loss regime is today. And uh, uh, to conclude, uh, you can see that uh, baldness was an evolutionary adaptation, that uh, males uh, were, uh, have, a, have an advantage for be, from being bald, and uh, that it's not bad, bad to lose hair, lose hair but, but it's, uh, it's good. good. And so, and so next, time next time you look in the mirror, in the mirror you see that you're, that you're losing hair, hair. Don't, feel don't feel old, old or uh, unattractive, but to rather feel part of a tradition of humankind to become more adapted to harder and harder circumstances. Thank you. And And uh, I'd also and like to thank Barbara uh, Fade, Lily Fade, and Zach Winner Smith, without whom this presentation wouldn't be possible, and, and my father for being the inspiration behind, behind it. <laughs> <laughs>
be also the reason why men don't lose hair immediately. <laughs> Very nice. True. And actually, I have a good group for you to study as a control for that because they have very bad health and very long hair. So you should expect very low uh, uh, fitness of these individuals. <laughs> it's uh, heavy metal syndrome. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's obvious that that, that, <laughs> that that it's obvious that you're right, and I, I share with your father an interest in, in this. However, there is a, I mean, I, I find myself a bit at a loss to explain why there are so many people who have hair. <laughs> Men, that is. Why? Why is that? What are they doing there? Uh, well, this uh, is obviously because of. Uh, environmental conditions, the, the, they didn't have enough food, so they fought, and then it was adaptive to lose hair to become less vulnerable. If in other populations they didn't have a uh, lack of food, then there wouldn't be fights, and the men had a tendency to become with a full head of hair their whole life. So <laughs> then, uh, with the populations merging, the, there could be a, a variability within the population. But but I mean, there are a lot of conflicting forces at, at work here because obviously power is less important than it used to be. Yes. Right. So we can expect that the that particular disadvantage of losing one's hair has has been mitigated in the last hundred years. Let's let's say, and at least in the, in in some parts of the world, apart from the United States, uh, fighting between males has has has, has gone down. <laughs> So it's, I guess that, you know, we baldies are on the up, so the way I see it now. And that whatever the, these hidden advantages may have been for the long hair guys, I think uh, we can say that that's probably now a thing of the past. <coughs> I guess I'm just wondering, I generally buy the theory, I think it's very compelling, and I'm kind of wondering about the implications in modern society because at least in the media nowadays, hair pulling, it's mainly depicted in, say, mud wrestling, generally fought by women. <laughs> so would you predict perhaps that in the future women should adapt <laughs> to begin to show a new, new pattern of baldness? It's a possibility, and even in the future, with uh, enough time, males may start to prefer women with less hair. <laughs> Along the lines with the Zach's question about how uh, this, your theory impacts in the, in the future evolution of baldness, I was just wondering if you thought of the impact of the shaving so now people can shave and so they would temporarily lose their hair and not have the health detrimental effects of being bald and so do you have you has it been seen already a decline in baldness uh, in men uh, well i haven't gathered the data on that but it, it, i could assume that the baldness would decrease with time because there isn't the pressure of fighting we, we do see simulated baldness. I mean, Zach has, you know, had, had a go. He's been, you know, had a few days since. But, you know, people like Tiago, well, I don't know, I don't know what Tiago is. <laughs> what? I didn't say where. What? I said, uh, <laughs> is he bald or is he shaved? <laughs> but I, <laughs> he's both. <laughs> So you have, to, you, you have put your finger on something very interesting and important. That, that was a great presentation. And let me tell you, uh, it, it really opened my eyes. Because w one, one of the questions I've had for, you know, the last few days uh, was why when we lose hair, you know, why do our nose hairs and ear hairs uh, 
grow. <laughs> and, it, you know, it, it's obvious now that it's a health matter. It's, you know, it's the body trying to maintain the health. And that was, you know, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Thank you.